Alright, I'm going to do a lathe video on taking this apron apart here. I had it, um, it was on my lathe and I took it off because the clutch isn't working and it probably needs to be cleaned anyways, so I took it off. Uh, there's videos online how to take them, take them off if you're not sure. It's pretty simple. It's two screws. You take the, the bearing off for the lead screw and you two screws and the, the locker screw and you can slide this thing right off. Um, I'm going to take this threading dial off, but one thing I wanted to show here is if you can see that. I know my camera's not the greatest here, i got to get a new one, but um, these gears are radiused. And how did that happen, may you say? Well, somebody, instead of just turning it in enough to gauge on the lead screw, they pounded it all the way, not pounded it, but pushed it all the way up in and then tightened it down and left it there. and or used it a lot or they might have just pushed it up and left it there and, and never taken it off but now I'm left with a nice round gear crowns and it still works good as you can see it needs to be cleaned but sorry it still works good but I'm gonna clean it up and see if I can get a new gear for that because that's kind of annoying all the rest of it looks okay um, it's kind of funny I take this thing apart, I tipped it over here and I had a bunch of bird seed come out of it. So either somebody thought they would store their bird seed on it or there was a little mouse or something making a nest up in there. Which I am guessing it was probably a little mouse. So here's uh, 730 seconds and there should be four of them here. So, all right, we got our four screws off there. We're going to see if we can see what else we're going to take off here. There we go. So, let's see what's up here. Well, that could be part of our problem. Look at that. Bird seed all up in there. So, other than that, this looks extremely clean. Somebody must have taken this apart at one time. See, there's even a little chunk of corn down in the corner there. Say, hmm, say that for later. But yeah, so I took this thing apart and fully expecting something to be completely wrong with it and yep, see that? That's probably what my problem was, but I'm going to take this apart here. I won't take it apart, sorry, now that I looked at it. I'm just going to clean some of the little bits and pieces up on it. Um, like I said, everything looks extremely good in here. Everything looks like it's actually just been cleaned, but it's still kind of dirty. The, the half nut here is dirty, and and uh, i got to get all this crap out of there. Alright, there's all the bird seed I got out of it. I have no idea. That's my cap. I have no idea how it got in there, but it's a good, uh, I don't know, quarter to a third a cup of bird seed, which is kind of weird, but... <clears throat> I hope that's the problem, so I'll throw that away. I'll finish cleaning and oiling this. I started oiling it and cleaning it, but I'm going to finish that, put it back together, and we'll continue on. Alright, so I put this thing back together, and it was just the reverse operation uh, that we put it together with, or took it apart, sorry. Um, now I'm just going to slide this on there, and you just got to make sure your keyway is kind of lined up. Well, it has to be absolutely lined up. Turn a little bit here. There we go. So it slides right out. You can see it's kind of clean. And then I get this up here and I got my screws handy here, so I'm just gonna loosely pop it in. And I cleaned all these surfaces, the top and the bottom, the bottom of my saddle here and the top of my apron. And I oiled them. Okay, and then here's our Settle stop. And I'm going to wipe this off because this is one thing I didn't do. Clean that off really good. Because that rides on the bottom side of your, your ways. Not, well, underneath there. So then, this is kind of tricky. Get that up underneath there. This is the easiest way I found to do it. I don't know, maybe there's an easier way to do it. Now that that's in there, now we can tighten these guys down. Okay. 
shelf left is to put this guy on. And then it bolts. See if that squirrel packing the nuts in there was the issue. Plug it in because it was unplugged while I was working on it. Even though I was working on the tailstock end. You never know. That lead screw is attached, so you don't want to be hitting that. So alright. So I should be able to pop that guy up and Take this part and try it again. Something, something's not right. I don't know what the hell is wrong, but frustrating. All right, so here we are, round two, actually round three of this clutch. My clutch still isn't working. I took it apart, got the bird seat out of there, and we're still not getting engagement. So I'm going to take this. I got the apron off again, just like I did before, and I'm going to take my clutch assembly apart here. Two half inch bolts on the front here. This guy off. Phillips head. Let's see how many. See what we got in here. So that doesn't look stock. Here we got one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, five washers on that guy. So we'll see. Oh, six, I lied. There's one more in there. Maybe even two more in there. Set, so, yeah. So here we go ahead. Seven washers on that guy. Does that look, I don't know, it don't look, really look right to me, but somebody thought it was right. Let's screw that. That just unscrewed right off. And that lock not to come undone. And then the the radius edge of the nut was on the inside, which I'm not sure that's supposed to be like that, but we'll leave it for now. The washer. Worn side on the inside. So we should be able to pop this guy out now. Around. Pop that whole assembly out of there. So here we go, there's our clutch assembly. So I'm going to see what we got going on here. So we got a bunch of. Let's take this guy out. Ever so gently. clean here because I don't want to get any of this gunk in there. So what we got going on here is a series of washers that all have these little plates on them. So let's see if I can get one of these off of here. So there's the inner washer. There's the outer washer and they're all sandwiched together. So, let's see, and then we got a spring in there. I'm going to try to pull this out a little and see what... There's a pin there. It matches up with our pin in our end washer here. Should match up anyways. There we go. Let's try that matches up. Alright, so we got that. Let's see. There's our inner assembly. That matches up with the inner teeth on those washers. Little pin there. What else we got here? This must be all. Oh, there's a 
bronze bushing. I'll stick that back on this guy so I know where it came from. And then I believe this is all one assembly right here. So I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to take a look at this and see if I can figure out what the issue is. I guess I don't see anything obvious right off the bat. Um, the inside here looks okay. I'm going to see if I can first off clean all this stuff up and then see if I can figure out what the issue is and then we'll, we'll continue from there. So hang tight. Alright, I have it cleaned up here and I didn't really see much of anything that should go wrong other than these plates are kind of full of oil and stuff, but I think there's supposed to be oil in there anyways, so <coughs> um, I'm not sure if I'm going to... I'll have to do some research whether to put some oil back in those or not, but I would think there should be oil in there because this is supposed to be a, like a wet sump system. So I'm going to put a little bit of spindle oil in there and then uh, put it back together. I, here's my gear assembly. I put some oil back in there, so um, just pop this back in here. One thing to note is that these uh, <coughs> the inner washers will only go on, or they seem to only go on uh, the interior here. I don't know if you can see that there. There's the teeth. Those washers need to be be fit in there a certain way. So I'm going to take this off and and see if I can get this to go. See, I'll do these one at a time. And I tried to make sure that I kept them <coughs> the same orientation when I took them off. So they all hopefully match together back the way they're supposed to be. Oops, sorry, you can't see it here. Seriously, that one fit in there. I had to turn the other ones to get them to go in. So then we'll, I'll put a little bit of oil on, a little bit of spindle oil on this, and then a little bit in here. You can see that the spring works nice now. There that fell in, and then we'll, there that fell in. Alright, so I'm going to pop this guy back in there. I got it all back together, cleaned and assembled and lightly oiled. I'm going to put a little <coughs> oil on this guy right here. And then pop it. I already oiled and cleaned all this stuff in here, so... Everything seems to be... There we go. Everything seems to be tight. And I'm going to hold this in place while I flop this over. I'm going to put my these guys back on. I'm going to put some oil on here on the surface because that's a looks to be a rotating surface. And then I'm going to set this down here. Hopefully I can pop that back in. Wash, clean this nut off a little bit here. And I don't think this matters, but I'm fairly sure, certain uh, <coughs> the uh, chamfered side of this nut is supposed to be sticking out. Because that's usually how these are. I'll tighten that guy up. Okay, and then we'll get this, get our screw back on. And I guess I didn't even need to take these two bolts out. I don't know. I did, but. Okay, so now I can see why they had 16 washers in there, because that threaded end is sticking out quite a bit. So I'm not sure that's supposed to be quite that far out. So I'm going to get this guy back together, <coughs> and before I do, I'm going to clean off all these surfaces, and then uh, I'm also going to clean this off, because this is supposed to be a, like a wet sump system on these guys. Uh, there's a there's a plug here for a filler, and then on the, the back side there's a drain right here to drain it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, maybe about starting here and all the way over to here, I'm going to put some a thin, tiny little bead of RTV along here after I clean this off. So then when I do put oil in there, it's not going to be leaking all over the place. 
<coughs> when I took this part initially, as, as uh, in the beginning of the video here, you could see there was nothing in here, no oil or anything. I believe they call, in the manual, it calls for a 10 weight SAE 10 machine oil. A lot of guys use standard SAE motor oil. Uh, as long as it's not got cleaning additives in it, it may be okay. That's kind of at your own discretion. Some people say it's okay, some people say no, it's not okay. So if you can find some stuff that works, non detergent, that would probably work. Unless you're using this thing every day, then I would probably absolutely get what's recommended. I'm going to see if I can find some machine oil, but if not, I'll probably try and find some 10 weight uh, motor oil. Alrighty, I have this thing back together and cleaned, and I got my blue RTV sealant, and I'm just going to put a thin little bead of it along here. towards the end there. I don't know why they made these tubes so large. Most most of the times you never need that much. And you don't have to do this. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to I don't want to have oil dripping out of here all the time. And I'm going to try it. I just went in a local parts store and a little machine shop close by and I tried to find some uh, 10 weight oil but neither place had them so go figure so I got a little bit of oil in here and I'm just gonna put this thing back together the way it came apart so what I've found is that having this shifter level lever in the upper position here helps then I'm gonna hold this top gear in place and I'm gonna ever so gently hopefully you can see try and get out of the way this on there. Not in my half. There we go. Turn that a little bit. There we go. Plop. So now I'll pop these uh, four screws back in, and we'll stick it on the lathe, and I'll try it. I don't haven't found oil yet, but I will um, do some research, see where I can get some. I know I can get it online, but I was hoping to find it locally first. Um, so I'll throw it back on, and I'll test it. And I, I have enough oil, that light spindle oil I put in there should be good enough to just test it out. I'm not going to run it that much, but I can test it out and see if see if it worked. Alright, I have it back together, and like I said, I got a little bit of oil in there just to, to test it out with, and I, I think and it feels a little better, but we'll, we'll try it out here and hope for the best. Third time's a charm, right? So we got our lead screw going, and let's try it across. There we go. Loosen it up. Tighten it up again. Alrighty. So what I think, well, let's try the other, let's try the cross feed here. Alright. So it's working the way it's supposed to. Then we'll try our half nut. Speed it up a little here so we can see what's going on a little better. There we go. Loosen it up. Cross side. Alright. So, what I found out here was that uh, first off, it was kind of dirty and I had some thick grease in there, so that didn't help. So cleaning all them plates off uh, seemed to help. On top of the all the bird seed that was in there from a squirrel or a mouse or whatever decided to put it there. And then what I did when I 
put this jam nut back on, I tightened that jam nut as much as I could. And it won't turn now because I can't get to it, but um, I tightened that as tight as I could, and then this guy tightens up against that jam nut. So, and then this guy, which is all in 14 washers and that little Phillips head screw, that's not really doing much of anything. All that guy is doing is holding this knob from coming completely off. So I can screw that back on and and it'll it'll keep it from screwing out too much but when this engages I mean you only gotta turn it you know an eighth to a quarter of a turn and it should engage so so I'm really happy and you can't get that too tight otherwise it won't work I might put some oil in the washers here but I gotta look and see what's supposed to be there because I know there isn't supposed to be 14 washers in there or seven in my case but there we go I got that thing taken apart and fixed and and now it works which I'm extremely relieved because I know those washers cost about 25 bucks a piece and there's what was there eight or ten of them in there so that'd be kind of spendy to fix and all my gears are good so um, you can use your lathe without this but it's really handy if you're turning a long piece then you don't have to use your half nut your half nuts pretty much only used for threading so there we go fixing the clutch on a Logan 922 uh, this would also work with south bends, or south bends are very similar. I'm not sure if their plate system is quite the same, but I can't see how it would be too different. Uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. There should be a little doggy right up here. Uh, you can hit him or click on one of my other videos, watch it, check it out. Uh, I got a bunch of other videos on lays and little milling and and just general stuff, whatever you want to see. So if you like it, tell your friends, tell your family. I'll see you next time.